So as I mentioned in the installation video, um, when you're going through the OBS installation, it's kind of guiding you through. You may run into a screen that says you're missing something extra, like uh, the Visual C++ uh, 2017 redistributable. Um, basically what that is, is something that runs in the background that allows several other programs that rely on it to run, and OBS is one of those programs. Um, if you're up to date on Windows updates and things like that, it may not be an issue. If you're running Windows 10, it may not be an issue. Um, it may already be taken care of, but it really just varies from computer to computer. So it may look like uh, a screen that just says a 64-bit version. It may be a screen that shows you 64-bit and 32-bit, as such as the one I'm looking at right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install this EXE for 64-bit. There are a couple of different ways we can do this depending on um, how we want it to act in our browser. So each browser, Internet Explorer, um, Firefox, Chrome, or if you're on Mac, Safari, um, each browser is going to handle this a little bit differently. These menus look a little bit different on each browser, but for the most part they have all the same um, interactions and options. So. One thing I can do when I see this Visual C++.exe is right click that and I'm in Chrome right now so the option is save link as. If I choose save link as it's actually going to pull up a browser window for uh, all my files on the computer and I can say something like desktop just to uh, put that somewhere that's easy for me to find. It's going to be easy and quick so if I hit save we see at the bottom it's going to show me that my download is complete I can go ahead and click on that or if I need to just go out here to the desktop and find exactly where I just saved that um, in Chrome I'll just click that once now the installation for C++ should be running I can choose I agree to the license terms and install Now, as you see from the taskbar down here, I already have OBS um, running on this computer. That's actually what I'm recording with uh, for this session. So um, I don't actually have to go and reinstall it. But at this point, it should tell you something like you must restart your computer before you can use the software. And at this point, I would suggest going ahead and saying restart. Um, but either way, after the computer restarts, what you're going to need to do, if that if that initial OBS installation was interrupted by it telling you you needed to install this extra software you're actually going to need to go back to obsproject.com and just hit that download button one more time and that's if you don't have this EXE or you just choose, chose RAN the last time otherwise this could still be saved into your downloads folder and you could just go in there and pull that up again but in this case, I just open it again and go through. Um, uh, so it's telling me it's already running. So um, it's not going to install over itself again, hopefully here. Um, but it should be that simple. Otherwise, let's see if we can pull that up in another browser and see how it handles it. So in Internet Explorer, going to that same page, For the Visual Studio runtimes, let's see what happens if we right-click that option, and we have uh, Save Target As. That's what the option we used earlier looks like in uh, Internet Explorer. Um, so that was the same as Chrome's Save Link As. Um, so in, instead of Save Target As, I'll just see what happens when I click this the first time. So this is what it looks like in Internet Explorer if you want to download an .exe file. So do you want to run or save? Um, if I need to maybe come back to this or put it in a certain place where I need to see it again, I can go ahead and do save and choose where that's gonna save to. Otherwise, if I just click run right here, it's gonna download it and open it up. I can go through uh, the installation process again if I needed to. But I'm gonna, just gonna cancel that for now and go back to Chrome. So after going back to that OBS project installer and uh, I've, I've already installed the C++ runtime, if I'm still having trouble, 
then I should probably look into that link at the bottom that mentions uh, if you're running Windows 7 or 8.1. And let's see what's on that Universal C runtime update page. So basically what this Universal C runtime program is that it's asking you to install if you're on uh, Windows 7 or 8.1. Um, this is a package software that would usually be installed from the Windows update, but the purpose of it is for uh, apps or programs that were designed for Windows 10 uh, to allow them to be used on older systems like Windows 8.1, Windows 7, um, etc. So in order to uh, install this software, you need to know what version of Windows you're running. Um, you're probably on 7 or 8.1 if you're seeing uh, that error or it's telling you that you need to install that. So to make sure, if you actually just open a file browser and you go to this PC or some equivalent to that, it may be called something different on those um, on Windows 7 or 8.1 versions, but it's going to say something like that and it's going to have um, your personal file system in there. When you're on this screen, if you right click and you go to properties, just right click anywhere in that white space, it'll tell you exactly what you're running. So I can see that this is Windows 10 Enterprise and under system type it has 64-bit operating system. Uh, so you don't need to know too much about that. You don't have to get too technical here. Just as long as you know whether it is a 64-bit or 32-bit system, chances are it's 64-bit uh, most computers now are all going to be 64-bit and moving forward um, they're mostly all going to be 64-bit so um, in this case say I had a Windows 7 um, version of Windows that is 64-bit I would choose download this package now um, if by chance it was a Windows 7 that said 32-bit what I'm looking for is this x86 right here that's the 32-bit so for 64-bit I would just click download the package now and I can choose my language. I'm going to choose English and download. Now I don't really want to mess anything up on this Windows 10 machine by installing this for Windows 7 so I'm not going to go through this but you should be able to open it and run through it like any other installation.